There's a lot of conflicting information around when and how to start solid foods with babies. It's no wonder that new parents can be anxious or confused over how best to start. So joining us on the Coffee Group today, we welcome internationally renowned child health expert, Dr. Julie Basali, and leading sleep consultant, Dorothy Way. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to have you here. Let's start with you, Dorothy. Uh, sleep, or lack thereof, is probably the number one complaint when there is a newborn in the house, isn't there? If you could give one piece of advice to all parents, what would it be? Not to do anything in arms that you can't replicate in a cot. So that when you're holding a baby, look at your cot. If the cot rocks, rock your baby. Cot swings, swing your baby. The biggest thing is that we're all encouraging parents to do large movements on their babies in the first 12 to 16 weeks, knowing fully well babies don't have the tools on to self-soothe or resettle before those ages. Yeah. So when we come to that age, we put them in the cot, and they cry louder because we're not doing that movement. Wow, that's interesting advice. I've never heard that before. I know. But when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Mm. Um, Julie, what do you think is the ideal time to start a baby on solids? Well, the World Health Organization does recommend from six months, and yeah. that's something that I heavily endorse because it does take a baby's uh, digestional tract two years to fully develop. So okay. holding out to then is really important, and of course that's when their iron supplies are starting to drop off. So what happens if you've got a baby that's just screaming all the time before <laughs> that six-month mark, and you're waiting for that that day where they turn the six months? The magical dot. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got to remember every baby is different. There's never going to be, you know, a deadline for each. So it's important. To to take that in cons into consideration, okay. but I still recommend holding off for as long as possible to okay. that six month mark. So what do you think the first food should be? Well definitely not baby rice, yep, so nice soft vegetables that are easy on the gut, quickly followed by a meat or a meat alternative to really boost that iron level up. So why do you say no baby rice, because back in the day that was what that was the first thing you gave them, that mush. It is, and it's, it's still recommended today by some healthcare providers, so there's a, a multitude of reasons, but the key one being that Babies don't actually produce the enzyme, pancreatic amylase, uh, until about 10 to 12 months, and that's what's required to break down the starch and grains. And the meat is interesting too, because it used to be you held off with the meat until they were yep. quite old. Yeah, so no, it's really important to get that in, because of course one of the key reasons that you're actually supplementing around that six month mark is because babies' iron levels are really, really dropping. So you've got to get a meat or meat alternative source in because that's going to be your highest iron. Okay, obviously not like a nice hunk of steak or something. You've got to mush that <laughs> stuff up incredibly well, don't you? Yeah, well, I mean, you've sort of brought up baby lead weaning, which, of course, there's there's two sort of divides with that as well. I'm very down the track of do both. So, you know, let your babies enjoy the taste and the texture of a more firm piece of meat, but, of course, they're not actually going to consume that. So, yeah make it into a form that they can. Now Dorothy, does starting a baby on solids, does that um, help with the baby's sleep as well? Not necessarily. Babies need two nutrients, food and sleep. So if they sleep well, they'll eat well. So if the babies have been taught to self-settle and resettle in a nurturing environment, then they may be ready for solids. However, if your baby can't fall asleep on its own, resettle on its own, we need to look at their daytime routine. We need to make sure they're getting enough milk on board before you go down that that chain and looking at a breastfed baby we've got to make sure that the mother's supplementing herself getting all those good nutrients on board so in today's society we do need to use supplements because breastfeeding mums they don't have time to cook to the perfection all the food's overcooked so have a look at what you're taking so I always look at their daytime routine making sure they've got the right wake cycles making sure they know how to self settle and resettle I will always work with the mum for about 10 days and then at the 10 days we'll have a look and see what's going on. But yes, sometimes if you're a working mum, you've got a busy household, that extra feed at night before they go to bed can work wonders, but a lot of mothers are led to believe that it's going to be the magical fix. It's yeah. not a magical fix. We would like it to be a magical fix, uh, Absolutely. Any new mum would say they'd love it to be a magical <coughs> fix, but it's not necessarily. No. Well, that's some really fascinating advice that you've both given us here. Thank you so much for joining us. Our pleasure. pleasure. Really, really good. And you can see more of Julie and Dorothy, their starting solids tour is in Tauranga this weekend and in Wellington on November the 5th. You can get your tickets from Event Finder and Julie Basali's website. Dorothy and Julie, thank you so much. Really love that discussion. It was great chat.